Hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Atute here, and I'm super, super excited to be catching up with Flash Morgan Webster. Hello. Hey, how's it going? You all good? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I think everybody's in the same boat at the moment, aren't they? Just ticking on, ticking on. Right. I mean, how are you kind of coping with everything, staying sane? I know a lot of people are almost running out of things to do, things to watch. So where are you at right now? Um, to be fair, like it's kind of helped me when it comes to workouts. Maybe I've been going to the gym for a while and doing the same thing over and over and over again. So I was lucky enough to grab some gym equipment from the, the local CrossFit gym before this all kind of got really shut down. So I've been mixing things up. And at the moment, my I'd say I'm probably one of the best shapes I've ever been in just because I think I'm changing stuff up all the time, which is keeping me sane and working pretty well at the moment. One of the biggest things you've been changing up is kind of not eating as many of the Maryland cookies. So do you miss them a lot? <laughs> oh, I do. I really do. Oh, so badly, so badly. But I'm, I'm trying to replace them with uh, burpees and ice cream. So that's really, uh, it's really keeping me sane, keeping me good in here. <laughs> was that one of the go-tos you'd have when you needed that snack? Or like it was a cheat day, it was those cookies right away? Or was there something else that you would also kind of munch on? I'm uh, I'm not really a sweet tooth kind of person. I'm more about the fat okay. things, but I'll be but I'll be honest with you. When this lockdown happened, and I I used to just go and do like a shop maybe once, maybe two or three two or three times a week, and I would grab what I need. But now we have to do a shop like once a week. So when I'm going around the shop, I start thinking, well, well, what do I want? And again, these days can be a bit can be a bit boring. Sometimes you think, oh, I'll have some cookies, and then all of a sudden, then I've got two or three packs of Mayline cookies in the trolley <laughs> before I know it. <laughs> Yeah, I've been there. There was uh, this new ice cream I was trying called like Halo ice cream. I don't know if they have it over there, but I was like, you know what? You do? I was like, I'm just going to throw a couple in there. And worst case, if they're gone by the end of the week, like I'm home, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, one thing that we were talking about before we started recording was your podcast. And you mentioned for a little bit, you know, you kind of stood aside. And now with everything going on, you have rebooted it. So tell me a little bit about uh, the Wrestling Friends podcast and what really made you want to start one because a lot of people think, oh, everyone has one, it's easy, but it can be quite the undertaking. Oh, first of all, I just want to say, like, when I watch your interviews, you make this look so easy and uh, big, big reps to you. It's really, really not at all. <laughs> I was you. one of those people. I, I was one of those people who came into it going, oh, it's not that hard. I, I listen to Cole Cabana's podcast. This is easy. And two or three episodes in, I realized this is so much harder than it looks. But... um. <laughs> Yeah, I started it because I did the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016, April 2016. And unfortunately, I uh, fractured my ankle and dislocated my shoulder. And I was out for like 11 months because I had to get shoulder surgery. And the wrestling scene moved so fast. And at the time, I missed I missed the peak. I mi like When I went off, British Strong Style was not a thing. And when I came back, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate and Trent Seven were everywhere. So I really right. did miss the boom start. So all I did in that time was I created a podcast, kept myself relevant, and it became something that I absolutely love to do. Um, I equate it to like everyone's been at a house party and it's two o'clock in the morning. Most people fell asleep and you've had a little bit too much to drink and you sat on the kitchen floor with a stranger you don't even know. And you have like an hour long conversation with that person and you kind of leave the house party kind of knowing that person a little bit more and have more of a deeper connection. And that's how I equate my podcast too. I imagine myself sitting down and chatting to somebody and sometimes it can be somebody I've known for years and I feel like I come away having like a deeper friendship with them or someone I don't know that well at all and end up coming out feeling like we really are friends. So it started off like that and to keep myself kind of relevant. And as I said, I stopped for a few months and now it's back and uh, I've been lucky enough for the last couple of weeks. I've had some of my biggest, some of my biggest guests to date. No, I really enjoy listening to it because you're right. It does just feel like you're sitting down with a buddy and you're just shooting the breeze. And that's the same approach I take to my interviews, whether it's a friend I've known in the business for years or somebody that I am just meeting right now. Um, it's one of those things where if you can just relate on that human level and find random things to talk about and just have fun with it, for whatever reason, the audience loves that almost like chilled out version of the people they love. So, yeah, it's, it's really fun to listen to. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I was wondering, is there anybody that you have yet to become friends with that you'd love to befriend and have on the show who's kind of that that one person you would just love to talk to? Um, I've kind of like, I'd say I've become more colleagues with like Shawn Michaels and stuff like that, but I haven't got that relationship with him yet where I can be like, hey, Shawn, do you want to come on the podcast? Right. So I'd, love to be able to, <laughs> I'd love to be able to do that. Um, uh, I've already asked people like Will and Regal and Robbie Brookside if they want to come on and both of them said yes, so hopefully I can get that done in a few weeks time or whatever but um yeah i guess Shawn michaels would be the the top of the list on on that one 
Oh, that'd be such a cool conversation. He's one, like one of the people I really want to get on too. So maybe it'll be a race and we'll see who can get no, in first. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> one day, hopefully we can both have, uh, have him on. <laughs> Now, you're, of course, known as the Mod Father. I remember seeing you for the first time, um, and I was just thinking, like, oh, my gosh, is this, like, Paul Weller's missing child or something? <laughs> like, just the look, the way that you had that flair. Um, I was curious, did everything kind of become inspired solely by music when it comes to your look and even the name, um, or did that come from something else? Um, well, I started off very similar to everybody else, really, kind of like, you know, cookie cutter, um, pro wrestler, I was in spandex, nothing really different about me. And I guess I just was a high flyer wrestler. And then I remember the more I kind of branched out there and I was, I come from the same school as Mark Andrews, me and Mark have been friends now for like 10, 15 years. And he's one of the, I honestly say he's one of the best high flyers in the world. And it's hard to compete with one of the best high flyers in the world when you come <laughs> from the same area, it really is. So it came about me kind of make myself stand out. And the more I kind of thought about it and what I liked and stuff like that, I thought to myself, maybe I need to kind of add a little bit of myself into this. Um, have you seen the show, uh, the the film and the show This Is England? No, I've heard of it, though. I haven't watched it. Yes, yeah, so there's, a, there's a cult film called This Is England. And I was watching it the one day and I was like, oh, what a, like, I was already kind of into that sort of stuff. And, you know, Oasis and The Who. And I thought to myself, well, this is such a, a great look. I'm going to try to start to incorporate this. And that's really where it came from. My mum's like a big Motown fan. And um, I remember listening to like... Uh, I remember watching this music video of Daniel Bryan, which is on YouTube. Everyone should go look it out. And it's set to uh, Barbara O'Reilly by The Who. And I can remember that's the first time I ever thought that wrestling and the music that I loved kind of came together as one. And I thought, well, if everybody enjoys that, then why can't the music kind of inspire my wrestling? So then bit by bit, I added a bit of Paisley and then went from trunks to tights. And then went from the tights to making it look like I was in a full suit. And uh, before I knew it then... I was the mod father. It consumed you. <laughs> I did, completely. It's a really cool look, though, because it is something that isn't cookie cutter. It stands out. I can't really think of someone else who does have that look or appearance. And, you know, a lot of stuff really is carbon copied, which it's a shame. So uh, I remember seeing it for the first time. and I was like, oh, my gosh, because I'm a huge fan of all of the 60s music. And then even getting into stuff from the 90s, whether it's like the Charlatans or Jesus Jones. I was like, man, it just really does fit right in there. And um, some of these gimmicks seem forced, but for you, it just seems like it's you walk out there and it's you. Yeah, well, I said I started off like I got the pinstripes, and then I got like the Union Jack jacket, and that was inspired by the the Who cover where you see them in the the jackets and stuff like that. But then the one that kind of really started grabbing people's attention was when I started adding the Parker, and that came from uh, I saw a shoot when I was out of uh, Liam Gallagher, and he had done a pretty green shoot, and he was in this um, blue and red. Uh, Boating blazer. It was a full full suit, and he had a parka on. And I was like, I "Wonder if I can find a boating blazer." So I found this boating blazer that looked a lot like it. And then I was like, "I wonder if I can make this look like a three piece suit." And when I told people this idea, they told me it was a silly idea, and it was like this <laughs> doesn't sound like it will work at all. But then the moment I started doing it, as everyone says, it's something that makes me stand out because I'm again completely different to everybody else. No, absolutely. And you had mentioned Mark Andrews there, and I mean it was cool because you guys actually became the first ever Welsh. WWE NXT Tag Team Champions. I love how that's a mouthful, but it sounds so <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, it seems like you guys have great chemistry both in and out of the ring. So did that come from just being friends prior and then you're like, okay, we're getting thrown in there. Let's just make the best of it. Yeah, so like maybe we tagged maybe two or three times on the indies before we kind of got to WWE. And uh, Mark's team of other people and I've team of other people on the independent circuit. And they kind of put us together because I guess they just needed teams to make up this tournament that they wanted to do. And we were fine with that. We were like, okay, we're not in a tag team. They'll put us together and see how it is. And they said, okay, we want you to go so far and then you'll probably kind of end up losing to the, the Grizzly and Veterans. And we're fine with that. So we have this match with the Grizzly and Veterans and it just gels together so perfectly, so easy. And we come backstage and Triple H and Shawn Michaels are both like buzzing off this match. And they're like, it's great. And again, I don't think this was in the tournament. I think they were just putting teams together ready for the tournament. So then when they put the tournament together, they were like, we've got to try to get this match to happen again. So we end up, again, wrestling the vets uh, in the semifinals. And again, I had another great match with them. And I think along the way then, we just kind of built up steam, started clicking together, having more chemistry. And it, we kind of think a lot the same, kind of both in and out the ring. So it's really easy when it comes to putting matches together and kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And then before we knew it then, Takeover Cardiff rolled around and we were in the prime position then to uh, 
kind of be slotted into this tag team championship match and as you said end up becoming the first ever Welsh champions in WWE history which is absolutely crazy right in that moment uh was that something running through your mind like did you even get to comprehend when you were holding up the titles like oh my gosh this is the first time this has ever happened or were you just so overwhelmed with everything else going on um you know huge company you're with one of your best friends did it not even hit you that that was like the accolade so like the the road up to that was really really bumpy again i had shoulder problems 2016 uh early 2019 i re-dislocated my shoulder again tore my labrum once again so we we kind of i tore my labrum was in a sling and then take over Cardiff got announced. And I was like, oh man, this is the worst time in ever. Like I wasn't, right. I wasn't hundred percent for the UK tournament the first time around. I was because of my shoulder and it felt like history was repeating the biggest show in my, in my country. And I'm not going to be able to do it. So it was on the fence whether we were going to be able to do it. And luckily I was able to rehab and get myself back to, uh, to, to back to the ring. But I That's- remember like Mark was like, come on, let's go out and do this. And I literally, all that was going through my head was like, come on, this shoulder's got to stay in the socket. This shoulder's got to stay in the socket, which I know sounds bad, but you never yeah. know. Again, you never, ever know. So it was when the three count happened, it was, again, elation, but also a really big relief that, again, once that happened... You made it. <laughs> yeah, we'd made it, exactly. And then, again, we end up in the crowd, and that that's when it really hits, when we were in the crowd, and I was among friends and family, and, yeah, absolutely unreal. No, it's a huge moment. Congratulations again. Yeah, it's just, well, again, doesn't feel real. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you so, so much for hopping on here today. I'm so happy that uh, this finally worked out and hopefully one day we'll be able to do this in person. Yeah, we do. And again, I love your, uh, I love your backdrop you've got going on, with all, the, all the posters and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. <laughs> Nothing like some kiss and taken back Sunday, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, everybody, this has been Flash Morgan Webster. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Atude. Be sure to check out aliciatude.com for all exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you next time. Bye.